welcome. Welcome to Really with Tom and Dave. Tom, how are you? I'm great, buddy. You look <laughs> yeah, oh, fabulous. Good. Thanks. Yeah, I'm, like, uh, I'm I'm dressed. I'm dressed for an event I have to get to as soon as we're done today. Uh, I, uh, not that I wouldn't this, dress up, up for this, but I just I just never not have. for our benefit. Okay. The fact that That's, I have never yeah. done it doesn't mean that I wouldn't. Um, I thought I was. I mean, I I kind of went sweater, but then, you know, how, I can't yeah. match this. No. You look you look great. You look ready for an event. It's nice, Mike. My, my, it's a fun I mean, event. Or you look what it's what is it? It's an art. It's an art event in Tribeca. It's an art ball. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna miss. I'm gonna is miss dancing, a lot of the ball part. Dancing of it. involved? Are you... I don't think so. I think I'm gonna get there in time for the, some of the dinner part. Is the plan? That's a, okay. I'm miss most of it. Um, oh, that's fun. That's very yeah. a New Yorkish thing to do. Yeah, and you and yourself. Uh, family, we're good. family. Have, they, have all the kids left again? Your kids. Your there kids was a little. Again? There was some. Yes, my not so small children were here. We had a good mm -hmm. visit. It was a good spring break. Uh, yeah. Some of which shared with with you. Yes. With you yeah. and yours. Yeah. With the lovely Alina and her yes. friends. That was great. We went to Disneyland. We, that was, yes. I, which was fun. Yeah. Thank you going. again. The Star Wars ride is phenomenal for anyone who hasn't gone yet. Dude. Dude. I don't know if I asked you. I asked my, I, I asked my kids and everybody else. Well, okay. So what's your top? Because that, that ride is, the Rise of the Resistance ride is It's the greatest sick. ride anywhere on, on earth. It's really good. That's not hyperbole. I think it's actually true yeah and the uh so what's your top five uh, my top five yeah. well that well that's the top four um yeah. no actually i still love uh uh space mountain is still one of my favorites it's uh i think it's just a beautiful okay. it's beautiful the one in in hollywood the one in florida is terrible um but space mountain i love um uh, uh big thunder mountain and of course uh, uh what used to be california screaming and now it's the Incredicoaster. That's a good one. Those are That's yeah. How many is that sure. for? And of course, uh, I'm a I'm a traditionalist. Pirates and uh, haunted Pirates. mansions. Yes, which was closed. That was the only bummer. Was haunted mansion was was closed because yeah. they're redoing the big. Uh, they're making the princess and the frog flume, which was the right. Yes. So they, <clears> apparently <throat> they're rebuilding parts of haunted mansion around that. Um, but yeah, that was a that was that was fun, and I think most of my I think Rise of the Resistance, I think Cars has broken into the top five. For oh, it's me. a great ride, yeah. It's the fastest ride, one of the fastest rides. It, it, you get up it's like so fifty good. miles an hour on that thing. Yes, I, Space Mountain has now. I've gotten old enough that it now makes me <laughs> nauseous, so I don't include it on my top five anymore. Mm -hmm. Pirates, absolutely, probably Haunted Mansion and Pirates side by side. Um, yeah, I mean, Big Thunder, Peter Pan. I have a little soft spot in my heart for that ride. It's yeah, so kind I just of haven't sweet. gone on that in a while since all I of our know. kids got, all of our kids grew up. Back when our kids were little, that was a staple. Yeah. Although the Guardians, they turned T Tower of Terror into Guardians, which um, that's in my top five too. That's an amazing ride. And the kid, the kids made us go on that like many times. That was yeah. that was a bit rough on my system, but fun. My recommendation, bring a half empty bottle of water on with you because then you get to feel that become weightless in your arms, which is kind of cool. Okay. That's mm -hmm. a good note. Well, hey, we should, you could we have should... given me that note when we were there, but let's, let's, let's move on here. Let's talk UFOs uh, and stuff and such. We got, we got shit to deal with here and we have a, a, a great guest, uh, who, uh, is also going to be, uh, uh, helping us figure out this, uh, terrific event that is that is coming up at the end of may that he is uh running and hosting and has put yes. all together um, out in indian wells so ron janix captain ron to some uh is the co-owner producer host of contact in the desert uh captain ron has been immersed in the ufo paranormal community for many years and through working with various conferences reading and researching and doing hundreds of interviews he's built up an extensive knowledge of the subject he began podcasting with the elevate the conversation show back in 2014 and then moved on to the truth be told show along with tony sweet in april of 2021 he founded the observation deck an online source for information on speakers as well as a place to host virtual events in and around the ufo community in 2023, along with Gordon Pickrell, he bought the Contact in the Desert conference. Uh, Ron will be starting up a new podcast before the conference called 
Beyond Contact. We were thrilled to be invited. Uh, we have invited Ron on today. We're really happy to speak with him about all things UFO and otherwise. Oh, there he here. is. There's Ron. Hello, Ron. We were like, we had that build up, and then. Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, Jack gave me all the information. He did not say anything about a tie or jacket. Neither no. of those were in my uh, email. This and, is not uh, normal. I apologize that I am underdressed for. I for I do I do not normally show up so sartorially excellent. <laughs> well, awesome. as we've said, it's Jack's fault. So let's yeah. you know we're going to blame. I like that we just blame, blame everything today. on him. So if we run into any uh, yeah. temptation today, maybe that's a good place to let's go. Let's start writing with this. Where did your life go wrong? How did you wind up in this subject? Like what was what was your journey? You know, I, I'm a lot of the people that you talk to. I'm sure you guys have experiences this that people often have had some sort of experience or something in their life or family. I don't have any of that. I'm just a guy that. Maybe going back to college, I sort of had an interest in this. And then I got interested in Art Bell. And I just, what's mm. better than driving across the country listening to Art Bell, right? I mean, that's yeah, fantastic show. Fun. I could drive all night doing that. So I just sort of had an interest in it naturally. And then like 10 years ago, um, I started doing a podcast. And I started, uh, a friend of mine was running a station that had a whole bunch of podcasts. And he brought me on to join his show, and it was about this. And I just sort of delved in even more. And then, you know, the more people you interview, and then I got involved in different conferences, and I'd start hosting conferences and introducing people. And you get to know them, and you just get more and more entrenched. So it's literally just something I'm interested in. There's, there, there's no personal experiences or anything. But I feel like this is one of those things where the more you know, the more there is to know, of course. And as I learn more about this, I feel like there's more here. And I think too many people that I know just dismiss this out of hand without looking at it, uh, the data, you know, as uh, Stanton Friedman used to say, you know, don't bother me with the facts. I've already made up my mind. Mm -hmm. and, and that drives me crazy. That's that's kind of where I come from. Yeah, it's true. It's tr oh, go on, Tom. No, I'm just curious. It's, I mean, it seems to have led to contact in the desert. Can you can you tell us and tell our uh, listeners what the you know what this is wh what it's going to be um sure who's going to be there what what should we get excited about everybody's going to be there number one we have over 70 speakers coming contact in the desert is sort of the premier ufo based uh conference that there is you know we expect two to three thousand people there we rent an entire hotel complex, a resort that's beautiful out in Indian Wells by Palm Springs uh, called the Renaissance. And it's basically everybody comes there. All the speakers give a free lecture. Many of them do an additional workshop and some even do an intensive where you can have two and a half hours with these guys. So it's an opportunity to here are all kinds of points of views on subjects related to this area. It's not just UFOs or aliens or any of that, but it, you know, that is our focus. But we, we cover a lot of things that are in this paranormal world. And, you know, we, we, the big thing now is artificial intelligence is coming on. So we have a lot of features and a lot of good speakers that speak to artificial intelligence and what's happening there and the sentient possibility of that which is fascinating to me basically everything there is interesting it's just like you can't you can't stop being fascinated as far mm -hmm. as i'm concerned you know and in a few years the fest the, it, the the it'll just be artificial intelligence showing up and talking about the old days when humans came i believe right and people will say send drones or something there in their steed to record that <laughs> yeah yep. and it'll be me and three people and and, and nothing else that's that's coming wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, it's a fascinating event. There's a lot of things going on. There we are have a lot of legendary people there this year. Oh, we even have a panel called Legends. Mm -hmm. And it's it's truly the legends in the field. I mean, Travis Walton, Whitley Strieber, Richard Dolan, uh, Russell Targ is going to make it, if you can believe that, which will be fantastic. It's, it's really going to be an amazing um, celebration that it's 10 years of our event. You know, we've we've 10 years of the live event. This actually started earlier. I think it started in 2010 or 11. And it's the 10th time we've had a live event out there. 
And, uh, you know, there's other things besides these, these, these talks. There's also, uh, we have a bus excursion that goes out into the desert with Mark D'Antonio, if you guys know him. He's an astronomer, and he explains what's going on in the universe and what's a satellite and what to look for. We have the Integratron and Giant Rock are very close to Palm Springs. So we do an excursion out there where you can go experience the Integratron and everything. So there's a lot of different things happening in addition to this. And also it's the fact that, you know, there's two or 3,000 people there that are all part of this event. We rent the entire complex. So it's not like we have a little part of it and you're just talking. Anybody you see anywhere at a restaurant and, and walking around, they're all here for this. So, you know, you could just talk to anybody. So you get a lot of uh, interaction with speakers and a lot of interaction with other attendees that are all commonly interested in this. And it's a one of a kind experience. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm definitely looking, be great. Yeah, really looking forward to it. Uh, we have a we, we are going I guess we're doing a lot. We're doing a live podcast from contact in the desert. Yeah, um, something we'll new. We started that. this year. Every day we're going to do a live podcast. Uh, we have a little room right off the bar there. And we're going to set up theater seating. And you guys are going to sit up there and do your podcast just like you do here. And people will get to experience that live, which would be really kind of cool. No, we helps. do know the danger of setting Dave loose live in any we kind want, of setting. We live well, on it. We, we edit this. Yeah. I mean, you can't. we edit the <laughs> shit out of these podcasts. You can't imagine what goes on here. This is terrible. This is so dangerous. This is going to ruin yeah. contact in the desert for well, see, years to come. Flavor for that. You guys seem all polished on the air. Now they're going to get to sit in the audience, watch oh you guys God. do this and realize these fuckers don't know what they're yeah. doing. I'm going to be yeah. flop sweating. Dave's going to God knows where Dave's going to be. I mean, just stay clothed. That's all I ask. Just wear your suit. Please Dave. wear layers. All right. Even I mean, it's well, the this, desert. Is a, this is a nice summer weight suit, so it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring this. No, we were talking about what, like some, you know, that some of the guests that are, I mean, it's just uh, an amazing uh, group that you're putting together. And so we're, you know, we're trying to figure out like who we should have, maybe more than, we could do a couple, Dave, we could have a couple guests. You yeah, absolutely do a little round table. Table. Let me know. We right, can yeah. absolutely Maybe's set that up. A lot of these guys will do it. You know, we have a lot of really important people doing a lot of really important work in this field right now, starting with Danny Sheehan, who I think is the yes. most important pe person in our community, to be honest. For when a long time. On, there's, there's, there's your recommendation from me. I think he mm. is doing the most important work. He's working with Congress. They're trying to push this uh, forward. You know, Steve Bassett's there. Nick Pope is there. Hmm. There's yeah, a lot never, to choose yeah. from. Yeah, Steve Bass and Nick Pope are people I'm very excited to meet. Um, yeah. Because I remember uh, Tom and I, we were, for some, somehow we managed to get to go to the uh, Soul Foundation Symposium. And, Fantastic. And that was, back. And I, that was the most starstruck I've been in 30 years. And yeah. It was all those, all these legendary figures from the, you know, from the world of, uh, of UFOs and UAP. And, Absolutely. Uh, physics yeah. and so it was yeah an amazing bunch of people not not anybody can not very many people at all can get to the soul foundation and basically if you can't get there uh contact's your next best option to be it's, honest well contact yeah and and there's a pool um <laughs> and there's a pool that, it, there was no pool at Saul. that was a, a great disappointment <laughs> uh you know that was like wandering around in a speedo and feeling right. silly yeah <laughs> like i said tom you nailed it yeah. i'm telling you so, any excuse to disrobe yeah so really yeah looking forward to that 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 time even you know, like hearing everyone talk is going to be very exciting especially i'm really looking forward to that legends panel that you're doing um and uh but yeah is that that time in between where you get to socialize and and maybe hear maybe hear some of the stuff that people aren't quite ready to talk about during their absolute lectures you know uh well that's over in the bar area and mm. uh it's been my experience for eight years ago into this event, that that is where people will say things to you that, yes, they're maybe not ready to say that live on stage yet, hmm. but a beverage or two later and uh, you're hanging out and maybe they will say what they're working on or what they think or what they, you know, I, I, a lot of them are more comfortable saying what they're more sure of on stage, of course, like anyone would be. And then the stuff that they're speculating about you might hear that socially in between these events. And I think that is really, truly, for me personally, the fun of Contact in the Desert, that yeah. you get to have this interaction and you get to kind of talk, you know, freely with, with, with people like this that are experts and have done research and have gone to these ancient sites and have been there. Because it's one thing, as you know, if you've gone to any 
any ancient site or natural wonder. You know, it's it, it's different than you think it is from what you've seen on TV or in pictures. You know, people tell me that they go to Mount Rushmore and they thought it was going to be this giant thing. And then they get there and it's like this big and it's it's not what they had yeah. thought. So it's fun and, to hear these guys. What yeah. you know? What's it like inside the pyramid? What's it like at Machu Picchu? What's it like, you know, all over the place? Andrew Collins has been to um, Gobelke Teple, and uh, he's been he's been to a lot of places. So a lot of these guys are really fun to just kind of, and they like to talk about it. You know, it's it, this is their audience, this is their people. So it's a very unique experience. What and what in terms of you've said you've you've been to contact in the desert. You were there as a par, uh, participant, yeah, perhaps took, an audience member. Over. What what pro, what compels you? Like I I gotta like I gotta run this thing. Like well, that's a big shift. In a, it's and it's just a, it's one of those things that that the, the one thing that I do believe in in this community because I struggle with a lot of these things. I keep a very 3D healthy skepticism on basically all of this. I, I cannot stand when people start with alien. Mm -hmm. Alien should be the last option. We've eliminated everything that we think it could be. Now maybe it's alien. You know, I don't like when mm -hmm. people start there. Um, what were you saying, Tom? No, I was just in terms of going from an audience member or a participant oh, yeah, see, or, a, yeah, or exactly. a guest, like to running the whole show. That's a it's a big that's a lot of work. You know, well, it's the a, one thing that that I, I believe in only because it has happened to me in such sick levels is synchronicities. Mm. I, I kind of got in this community and I learned what synchronicities are. And I'll be damned if that's not what happened with contact in the desert, the way that this just came together and a series of synchronicities. And I'm just very happy about it. And it worked out great. And um, yes, I started just going as an attendee. I remember going my first time all by myself. I just got one of their flyers. I don't even know where I saw their flyer. And I went, wow, I got a code of this. I, all these guys are going to be in the same room. Right, right. And I went out there and it was back. It was out in the desert, actually. It used to actually be in the desert. It was more like Burning Man. Mm. And, you know, it's about 130 out there. And <laughs> it's a totally <laughs> different experience. And when I uh, run was, this. I'm going to bring air, air conditioning to yeah. Well, no, they they ended up moving it into a, in this beautiful resort. We've kept it there. You yeah. know, I then got to know them, and I then had my show, and I'd get a media badge, and then I became kind of a host for different things at Contact. And 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 it turned out the owners wanted to move on to do something else, and uh, Gordon was able to purchase it, and then he let me come in with him, and. Uh, it's the perfect team that we have on this. I can't even tell you guys mm -hmm. how wonderful when, it is. When, when did you take it over? Well, we, we about a year ago, to be honest. January yeah. of last year, we took it over. But we kind of worked with Victoria and Paul a little bit through that yeah. first conference because it was already so close. So this is genuinely our first foray into it. But since we did it last year with them, we're, we're, we're very comfortable mm -hmm. already. And we have the perfect team working on this, and we're all – we all feel a compulsion to be part of this. It's it's it's, it's kind yeah. of strange and it, almost. And it sort of it has roots going back to the fifties, really. I mean, it's not a continuous thing from the fifties, but um, but What's there that was contact? yeah. I mean, that's like out by by Giant Rock. That's where like George Van Tassel used yes, to sir. hold his route, his sort of gatherings. Absolutely, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's what they based it on initially and came up with the name and everything. I think because that's not far at all. And yeah, this yeah, is sort of a yeah. modern version of that, you know, and uh, with technology. <laughs> yes, know? yeah, and air conditioning. And air conditioning yeah. in the pool, as you like to say. Yeah. No, and it's um, – but I'm wondering, like, um, so when you first when you first started, uh, you said you, you – who did like, who did you first talk to that got you interested in the subject? Like, who was the first person to – Well, it was get, me the, hearing the our on the radio, to be honest. It was yeah. actually – that's what the start was. And then I'm sure you guys have asked speakers, hey, well, what book started you? There's mm -hmm. two answers that everybody gives, right? What are they? Um, that, well, well, I know what for books, me it was, but mine was com after, communion for me. Communion and Chariots mm -hmm. of the Gods. Oh, yeah, I had. Yeah, I was gonna. Good. I was gonna say day after Roswell. <laughs> okay, well there you go. Oh, look, you see that? <laughs> oh, look at that. No, they're just going. That that meant that I had the right answer apparently. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, yes, I. Every time I ask people, many of the speakers answer those are the one one of the two books that influenced them. And I did read those two books. I read Communion right when it came out, and I was really moved by that. 
Yeah. I, I, that's a very compelling story and a very compelling book. And I remember even back then, what, when did that come out, Tom? 84, 85? I think so. I was, um, let's see, I'm 52 and I think I was 15 when it came out or something. So I think 84, 85, you know, maybe a little later. I was three. It, it, or it, impa- it blew my mind. Um, and I remember back then people, uh, I immediately took to it and thought, well, this is a pretty incredible, credible story. And I remember people saying, well, Whitley Strieber's a fiction writer. So he's yeah. making that up. And okay, you know what? That was a good argument at the time. I kind of thought, well, yeah, you know, fair enough. Flash forward 40 years. He is as knee deep in this community as he's ever been. He is still putting out great stuff. Unknown Country, his website is is fantastic. His podcast is fantastic. He's still out there working on this. He's still a believer. And, you know, you, you've you probably met him or had him. I think he was on your show, right? He's the one. He's, a, he's definitely one where I think we had a, a sort of time limit with him. And I feel like, Dave, I don't know how you feel. I mean, I feel like we just skimmed the surface because he was we were getting dropped into anecdotes that, of course, cover all this time. Yes, as you said, 40 years of yeah. intensity, let's just yeah. call it that, of of interface with this world, with God knows what. And I would love, I he was even thinking about contact as a place to maybe revisit because I had so many questions left and and context and everything. He's he is a interesting interview to say to say the least because there's so much wealth of history there. Absolutely, he's a perfect example of one of these guys who who, who he's gone down um, and researched so much of this, so much more than when just communion was sort of the experiences that happened to him. Now that he's become you know a, a high member in our community. He has really, you know, done more research and interviewed other people and is a wealth of knowledge. It's and his I life. Think, yeah, uh, people his overlook him as well. Yeah. 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 I really yeah. enjoyed his, his new book, uh, Them, was really interesting to read. With the, with the, about the letters, right? Analyzing, that, yeah. Yes. Analyzing all the letters that have been, that were written to him after communion came out. Yeah. How fascinating is that? When he first wrote communion, all these letters came pouring in. That, that's a, that's a trip. Mine was one of them. Mm. I sent him a letter. Oh, is that and he, right? And he sent me a letter back, which is such so amazing. And that's why when we we had the chance to had the chance to meet him, um, and then we got him on the show, it was, it was a huge like yeah, what a full circle crazy thing. That um, is so cool that you have a letter back from Whitley Strieber from way back in the day. Yeah, I love yeah. that. That's very mm-hmm. cool. Here, uh, here's a quick anecdote: is that I uh, believe it or not, I actually uh, had some email correspondence with Art Bell. Mm. And he was going to come on my show. And I thought, well, how cool is this? You know, you never see him on podcasts. And he agreed to do my show. And I thought, wow, that is awesome. And then we were right about to do it. And uh, it was like a Tuesday morning, Tuesday evening. He emails me Tuesday evening. He emails me and he says, uh, you know, I'm just I'm not feeling up to it. So I'm I'm not going to do it. Thanks anyway. And I was so pissed. I'm like, Mm. You're not feeling up to taking a phone call. It's not like I'm asking you to drive. Just a phone call. And I remember being very like, eh. Thursday morning he passed away. Well, I was wow. like, well, you know what? He wasn't feeling up yeah. to it. That's, wow. Yeah, I feel better. I thought you were. Oh, I thought you were going to say serves him right. Yes. <laughs> No, I was thinking the opposite, Dave. I was thinking, <laughs> oh, great. Because it's yeah. great that I still have that from him, that email that our bell was going to come up Yeah, he was really a, nice with me up until he said I couldn't do it. I was like, oh. he He had the gift of credulity uh, yeah. <laughs> more than any, any other human being. I mean, you know, and sometimes it could, you know, it, it could make the show weird because, you know, you'd have someone come on and say, I'm being hunted by my Christmas tree. And you'd be, oh, my <laughs> God, that's amazing. Right. Oh, how, what's that like? But at least you he challenged them. Yeah. What, 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 what's missing in a lot of the shows today, I feel, is that they don't take people to task. Mm. I mean, that's my new ambition uh, on the new show is to really kind of take these guys to task a little bit. Uh, Art did do that. He'd be like, well, how do I know that there's a spirit living in your Christmas tree? Convince me. Yeah. Or give me evidence. You know, a lot of people just take these things at face value. Yeah, but I, he never thought, or, never accused anyone of being a liar or nope. crazy or anything. It's nope. just, let's well, let's talk this through. There's, you know? This is a delicate community. You got to be right and the right walk that fine line of not not making fun of the topic, not making fun of the people. Yet, you know, 
how uh, this is a big thing for me to believe how well, you got to give me more you know yeah well and it's that to me like one of the reasons tom and i do this podcast is because one of the things that I, I find sad is the number of people who have been so harmed and hurt by the stigma you know considering that so many people have had an experience and so many of them are living with shame from having had an amazing experience right isn't that and, ridiculous and sort of breaking down that that barrier and 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 reaching out to people saying look it's okay to talk about this it's you know none of us know none of us know for sure what it is we're all trying to figure it out but it's it, you shouldn't be ashamed if you've had a weird experience you shouldn't be ashamed of talking about it you shouldn't feel like it's something you need to hide away it seems so ridiculous to me that you would yeah you know now these guys that go around telling you that you're wrong and it's this way only that's another story, but you know, okay. It's a perfect yeah. example as you bring that up. You know, I, I do feel a certain sensitivity to this because like you said, some of these guys are afraid to talk about it. The shame they've ruined their lives. They've lost their job. They've lost their wife. They lose their house all because mm -hmm. this weird thing happened to them. You know, yeah. it's, it's not like they were this lifelong, uh, tinfoil hat wearing person. They were an accountant you know, working in Bakersfield and, and nothing ever happened to them. Then they're 44 years old. They wake up with this thing at the end of the bed and their whole life goes haywire. That that's a compelling story to me. Yeah. You know, I wanted to it's say one it's more tragic. Thing. Yeah. Go it's on. It's very tragic. Just, just, just because I, I don't want to forget this. You, you guys were just talking about Whitley and we were talking about communion. One of the fascinating parts about that is just what you touched on, Dave. He said when this happened to him, now that, you know, we've come a long way with this being out more in the internet and there's places to go. But in 1985 or whenever this first occurred with Whitley, he said that, you know, if you, if you're a woman in New York city and you're sexually assaulted, there are church groups, there are uh, organizations that will help you. There are support groups. There's, there's a plethora of, of places to go. Where do you go to say, I woke up with a giant bug at the end of my bed at two in the morning, staring at me, took me out the window. Mm -hmm. What do you do with that? And, 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 and you realize what a, what a lonely, scary thing that must have been. I was so compelled by that passage in that book that I thought, yeah, what, a, what an amazing that, what if that does happen to you? What do you do with it? What if it is real? Assuming it's real, what do you do? Mm hmm. Well, we had our, my, my an old friend of mine, Robin Ruzan, on who was a part of the uh, Hudson Valley site, uh, one of the Hudson Valley uh, mass sightings. And of course, there's many uh, sightings in Hudson Valley, but but she was part of one that her entire neighborhood witnessed. Her entire, wow. you know, like a you know a thousand people stood around and watched this spacecraft go over, and the entire neighborhood after this did not talk about it. They did, and she didn't talk about. It. She wouldn't tell most people. I've known her th over thirty years before she told me about it. Wow, um, it's wow. an incredibly effective shame campaign that the government uh, managed to pull off, De and, del and, and deliberately it yeah. takes takes very little effort on their part to, um, you know, push you to to be quiet about it. Um, we've talked numerous times about my dear friend Gina Anzulis, who came on and shared uh, her incredible story. And my interest, you know, and I had some pretty wild experiences growing up that, you know, led me to uh, feel quite strongly that weirdness is around us. There's no doubt in my mind that a weird <laughs> phenomenon is taking place. I think like you, Ron, and like Dave, I... I just can't, I, you know, there's some stuff that I, I'm, I'm open. I'm just not going to fully buy in, um, on everything I do. You know, I can't take it all at face value. When we have guests on, sometimes you're like, well, you know, I'm not, I don't think we've quite, quite created the forum. We're going to just like hammer people on this. I mean, it's, I, it's, it's an opportunity to people tell their stories. And, and I do find that these personal experience is some of the most compelling data that exists. I remember, you know, talk, I think we talked with Gary Nolan about this, not on the podcast, but about just, you know, the data and the data of anecdotes, the data of actual people, sorry, I've got to fly, um, mm -hmm. yeah. that, that, you know, that that is often disregarded as evidence, you know, and, um, exactly. you know, the government's just obsessed with some sort of, you know, uh, radar signature of that there seem to be plenty of, but, I, to me, it it 
it's be, be, it, one of the most vexing issues, problems with dealing with this is because of the, these these incredible testimonials, these incredible stories where it's so clearly something beyond <laughs> happened to them. And, um, and yet getting that into some organized, c- consumable, uh, understandable context where they can, it can be studied and whatever seems impossible. And yet, yeah. um, in time you're talking about the, uh, the ridicule factor, you know, as I often say how they did a great job starting back to the forties and fifties of ridiculing this. You don't want to talk about this because even today that rings true. People are afraid to lose their job at the bank because they've had some crazy experience. Oh, absolutely. And, 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 and that's bizarre to me. You know, we ignore that data. You guys talked about the data that's out there. I even think I, I still always point to Roswell. There is so much data and so many anecdotal points that all fit really nice into a puzzle here. And people just ignore it out of hand. Yeah. Well, there's just that's, oh, that's been debunked. That's some people yeah. where, and they go, has it? it? What's what have you had? I, you know, there was um, oh, where is it? Oh, this. Yeah. Like, uh, here's a book I can't stand. Uh, this one. Um, uh, cause it's <laughs> Dave's. I can't, I can't stand list. Yeah. So we should uh, have that books. I hate this it's one. A, yeah. It's essentially, you know, the, you know, uh, an author who basically might as well have just re- uh, reprinted every press release from the Pentagon from the yeah. past. 70 years. They right. said it, guys. There's no such thing as ETs or extraterrestrials. We have no evidence whatsoever, which yeah, they like just he, said a couple weeks ago. Yeah, because yeah. he, like, sweeps past Roswell, like, well, you know, a lot of people thought, or, you know, but it, but it turned out to be mogul um, uh, weather balloons with and radar reflectors. three times on that. Yeah. Yeah. And and you go, all right, all right, you're a journalist. You're just reprinting that as though it's the truth because you've been told it's the truth by by these people. But he said, you haven't analyzed any of the things that you have to believe in order to believe that story. Like you have to like you have to look at Jesse Marcells and say, um, you know, first, they have to, you have to just separate Roswell today from Roswell then, because right now people think of Roswell. They think of this weird, uh, freaky uh, hick town that's built a, in a, you know, their, their economy on UFOs. And but Roswell back then was the home of the 509th uh, fighter wing. Right. which was the uh it was the location it was the most important uh military site on the planet it was the only nuclear weapon site on the planet um it's where the enola gay was uh, that dropped the bomb the bomb on hiroshima um and jesse marcells was in charge of security for this base so in order to believe that that the, uh, the, the the explanation for Roswell is true. You have to believe that Jesse Marcells, the man who put in charge of um, of the most important military base on the planet, he's in charge of security for that base. That he's going to go out into the desert, see a crashed weather balloon, come back and report it as a crashed saucer. Yeah, and then then you know his higher ups at the base then put out a press release saying we've captured a saucer, um, and then. The next day, they changed the whole story. So you have to believe that that man with those qualifications mistook a weather balloon for a flying saucer, and then and then after this, he went on to be in charge of security and, and logistics for the Bikini Atoll bomb uh, bomb tests. So he, it's not like his career ended. Yeah, he had a, right. lo- a long, illustrious career and was trusted, even though we couldn't tell the difference between a weather balloon and a flying saucer. You know, adding right on top of that, Dave, is, is let's say a guy like John Mack. Here's mm-hmm. a guy who became the top of psychiatry at Harvard. This is not an easy job to get. This is not some, this is a bright guy. Avi Loeb, mm-hmm. top of his, he runs the astronomy department at Harvard again. So these guys get to this incredible position like Marcel did in the military. That's a, that's a high level guy, man. So we, we, we trust and respect them. Then five minutes later, they say, you know, there might be something to this UFO thing. No, the guy's a bomb, doesn't know anything. Yeah. Wait a yeah. second, wait a second. This is this is John Mack. He's beyond reproach, and now all of a sudden, he doesn't know what he's talking about? I, just because you don't like that topic? That makes no sense to me. And it's rather singular. I mean, it's one of the very few things. I guess it's the same is true of uh, ghosts and uh, some psychic phenomena, but, but particularly UFOs. Um, 
Yeah, that, that, that notion that you can have a, a, a long career, uh, be published, you know, dozens and dozens of times as a scientist, uh, and everyone respects you. And, and, and if he was delving into any other subject that might be a little weird, you'd go, well, there must be something to it if somebody like that is taking it seriously. But with That's UFOs, cool. it's, oh, he must have never been a serious person. Right. This guy get, was always a clown. Really? Yeah. How do you get so you, that job? Because you don't. It's he, it's apparently he got to be head of Harvard's astronomy department with no qualifications, no <laughs> papers, um, you know. And uh, I mean, the New York Times basically painted him as a lunatic with mommy issues. It's it's but, incredible. Yeah, and then they'll trot out Neil deGrasse Tyson. Right, right. You know, right. with no papers. Bag of you cash. Know, it, it makes me think of the you know yeah, the 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 smear. Um, is is always the easy first go-to and they tried to smear david grush with this article and you know that that cast him as just a lunatic with ptsd so you couldn't trust him or he had had depression issues so of course everything he said is meaningless and you know and kirkpatrick just came out with this report as we kind of alluded to which uh the arrow report which said nothing to see here which is hilarious um there's obviously so much to see here but they they just did this incredibly lazy, but you know, effective this, in the past. This government but organization I just want... can't find anything to see here, but the three of us do these shows every week and talk to David Fravor, who has something yeah. to see here. That's interesting. Yeah, and I thought I, it was. In, I thought it was interesting just to just to just to finish the, the the thought was just that sixty minutes just came out with this report on uh, Havana syndrome, which um, I haven't seen yet. Yeah, which you tell? which. It's well, it's uh, it's very compelling and it's very much it's very much seems like a, a Russian attack, but it's just another case of the government, which has been telling these sick people for years, uh, you know, high level, <laughs> high level people in the defense intelligence agency that, no, you're just going you're just going crazy and there's nothing here. Um, and now, as it turns out, it seems like there's very compelling evidence that Russia has been just testing whatever the hell they just couldn't figure out what the fuck. I mean, they had they've intercepted conversations where in Russian they're like, "Do I do I leave it on all night? Uh, is this the does it should it be blinking green? I mean, whatever." And they're just firing whatever at these at these folks. Um, and it and I guess my the the point is. Um, they fucking lie all the time. They just fucking lie all the time. And, uh, you know, and I'm coming from a I'm, a, I'm an institutionalist. I believe, you know, I think government is capable of some, some positive things. So, but at the same time, mm -hmm. there's such a record of lying that it, it, yeah. it does make this Arrow report ridiculously dubious. Um, but my long winded question to you, Ron, in terms of your opinion, do you think for the UFO community, are we at a tipping point do we have to is there anything that needs to come forward particularly as it relates to the grush stuff like is it time for somebody to wheel out a, a ship i mean are we is it is it you know well i'll, I'll give you my opinion on this right yeah. now I, I i i feel that unfortunately much like politics and i cannot stand politics or touch it however people in politics pretty much now have have, have chosen a team it's either a red team or a blue team. Right. They've chosen it. And it doesn't matter what the red team does. If it, no, it doesn't matter at all. They're on that team. So I feel, unfortunately, that that's what's happened with the UFO phenomenon. People in this community are all on board. And, you know, I've talked to these filmmakers, and they're all excited about their new documentary. And wait till this comes out. It's going to change the world. And, and it doesn't. And people in this community say, oh, well, that's good, but I already knew it. People outside the community didn't watch it and don't care. So mm -hmm. I feel like the needle's not moving enough. Steve Bassett will tell you that we're moving closer and closer to disclosure. And God, I hope he's right. But I just cannot see that happening. I I, I just yeah. don't feel like it's re nothing's really moving the needle. And I feel it's gotten so bad now that if an administration came out and said, here's the ship and here's the body, there'd still be people that don't believe it. Well, that and with I AI is, and all oh, this yeah. big stuff, people aren't no, going to believe it anyway. There is that whole wing that believes everything is a psyop and everything is, you know, and it's the logic isn't there. I mean, people that will say, oh, they're, they're they're trying to create a UFO threat to in order to increase funding for the military. And you just have to go, no, 
<sighs> There's no problem increasing funding. The military yeah. has all the money it wants. Since when? Yeah, yeah. since the military, when have they had fact, a problem getting a buck? Yeah, in fact, yeah, Democrats that's... and Republicans compete to give them more and more yeah. money every year. Um, you know, I love them. I love it more than you do. Here's here's another three billion. Yeah. You know. Yeah, exactly. So there's no there's no UFOs are not great fodder for getting funding. Um, you know, the, the only programs they had, they kept top secret. Um, it's not like, you know, um, so there's no that. So it's not a the whole you know, it's honest, all a psyop is in ridiculous fairness to these guys at Arrow and whatnot. I think let's say I always look at this hypothetically and rationally. As, as I try to look at all of these things. So let's say you have this knowledge and, and you have free energy and or whatever you've gleaned from discovering this. If you have that knowledge, whoever they put in charge of Arrow or whoever they put in charge of these things aren't the guys that are way in the back that know all the answers. They're, they're somebody up front that only knows this much anyway. And they can, it's plausible deniability. No, we don't have, I don't have any evidence of that. Okay, mm -hmm. that's because yeah. you're not the guy that knows. Let's go back three levels and get the guy that does know. Let's put him in here. Yeah, because really what they want to do is put somebody who already believes it's all bullshit and won't pay any attention to anything that says it isn't bullshit. Put that guy in charge. And then everybody can say, all my friends, when they came out with the Pentagon statement the other day, all went, see? Nothing. Yeah, I got yeah. sent that a lot. I was like, I didn't fucking write it. Like, why is, there, why is everybody sending this to me? Garbage from 1950. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing, I mean, like in the in the uh, the Arrow report, I mean, it was so sloppy, and like, there's no, they don't, they don't show their methods, they don't cite any facts, and then they list all these. They say, well, most of these are misidentified actual programs over the decades, and then they include the Avro Arrow car, which is a <laughs> Canadian. I'm very aware of Avro. Um, it's one of our darkest memories is uh, having how the Avro got shut down. Um, but they show the Avro aero car and, and describe, cause it looks like a flying saucer. It's disc shaped. Um, and they, they list it as though this is a pro this is, this is one of those programs that people mistook for UFOs. And even in their own report, they admit the thing only flew about three or four times. <laughs> That's it only flew at the you. Avro private lot. It never got yeah. more than three feet off the ground. Right. So how did the public get confused by this? How were the public confused by the Avro Aero car that barely ever flew and that only people that worked for Avro ever saw? Exactly. You know, but they, they, but they infer that, that's, that people saw this thing. Look, here's a video clip of it flying, you know, yeah. three feet off the ground, like wobbling all over the place. Right. That's it. That's, that's not what I saw. I saw something going 7,000 miles an hour, 90 degree turn, you yeah, know, making oh, no oh, sense. Oh, on, man. Yeah. Yes. I mean, listen, I agree. I think the report is sloppy. I think the excuses are flimsy. I think the the uh, all of it is obvious. It's 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 it defies logic. It, however, what Dave, I'd say to you, what is the what it's what burden is on the UFO community or because we've heard, I'm sure all of us have heard. I mean, we've heard on our podcast. We've heard privately with friends who are one removed from a person who has hands on, but like to what extent is the burden on the community to come forward with something fucking tactile? Yeah. Well, it's the thing is the community can't do it. The community can only push the people that have it to do it. Fair. That is fair. And support the people that are willing to take the risk to come forward. So the community, like, you know, um, you know, I mean, there are people doing great, you know, people doing great research. Um, but they're not going to get through that that firewall. Um, it's so the only thing the community can do is not be dissuaded the way the community was when the Condon report came out back mm -hmm. in sixty nine. Well, what they can do also, Dave, is they can, as you mentioned earlier, give these people a forum. Mm -hmm. You can feel comfortable to talk about this. We can collect data from these people with these claims, and people like Dr. Jacobs and others have created an enormous amount of data that have found similar things happening across contactees. Now you have a pattern. Now you have data. Data is a piece of evidence in my world. Mm. And we can, so I think giving people a forum and allowing researchers to, to exchange their ideas. So there are things we can do, you know, we can self-disclose, you know, um, there are people that feel in our world that that we've had disclosure. You know what's really fascinating? It goes right back to my point about 
when when Arrow comes out with that thing and says it's all garbage, the people that don't believe it said, see, I told you so. And all of us say, oh, that's bullshit report. So nothing's changed. Everybody just still say the same. Mm -hmm. You ever see the 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 Stephen Greer thing in 2001 when he did the uh, at the National Press Club? He had the disclosure project. You guys remember that? Uh, yeah, I've seen Vaguely bits of it. Yeah. Remember. It's yeah. it's fascinating when you watch the interviews with the guys that were the night before and they're interviewing them and they're like, I haven't slept in three days because on Friday we're going to do this and the world is going to change. Mm -hmm. They literally believed that the next day after they disclosed this, the whole world was going to go, oh, my God, it's real. And nothing moved. Mm -hmm. Nothing moved. Yeah. Our community stayed the same. We added two new members. And that was it. Nothing moved. We felt we had more knowledge and more evidence and more whatever. Nobody else cared. Nothing. And they were they couldn't believe that that didn't happen. Yeah. We got these that guys was... that are working at Maelstrom Air Force Base. They were there. They're saying they turned off these machines. Here's the paperwork. Blah, blah. Nobody cares. Yeah. Because I mean, like Leslie Kane and James Fox were involved I was in just setting about that, to bring hearing that up. up. And, um, I think if it's one, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, was the Greer one a separate one or was that the same one? Well, that the had, Greer like, one was 2001. That was the first big one. That was it. You know, yeah. and then Stephen did an X conference. Uh, the yeah. citizens disclosure was in like 2014, but 2001 mm -hmm. by Stephen Greer, that was the big first one that. Cause I remember was, there was the one that you, that uh, Fife Symington moderated. And it had like, yeah, uh, yeah Leslie right. said almost yeah. word for word what you just said, Ron, which was, we, you know, when we talked with her, which is like we they they just it was a they thought and were, I mean, correct in the fact they were dropping a bomb, a, a truth bomb with these pilots and generals and admirals and former governors and from all around know, the world, and, like, from all around the world with her with her book, with these astonishing like the people we trust most with our safety and our security and our nuclear codes and they are just spilling story after story after story after story and and yeah and the next day and documents they had from piles her, yeah. of documents they should these yeah. are the videotapes these are the things from the radar we've got radar that we recorded that something went seven thousand miles an hour did a 90 degree turn our our fighters couldn't catch up but yeah i'm forgetting his name there was the fa fa hoaxes there was the faa investigator who was looking into the japan airlines uh, incident where they yeah. tracked this thing on radar for 45 minutes and, uh, you know, basically saw something the size of an aircraft carrier traveling, right. at, 200, traveling at 250,000 miles an hour. That's insane. Well, those yeah. weather balloons are, they're getting big. Yeah, the weather well, balloons. Well, and Pelicans. Are, hell of a gust That's of wind it. right there. A lot of helium. You know, I find it all very today. frustrating and disappointing. Yeah. Yeah, and but I do, I do think we're further down. I, I, I'm optimistic in this way that I think, I can't recall a time, and I'm even look, thinking in terms of historical documents that I know about going back to the 50s. Um, I can't think of a time when there was more um, focus from people within government to get this story out. I agree and 100%. We had sure. We've never had, you know, I think, I mean, you know, Jerry Ford helped, you know, organized one hearing back in the early 60s. Yeah. Uh, that no one really paid attention to, and they didn't have any qualified speakers at. Um, yeah, and then you had uh, obviously that's where the famous swamp gas explanation came from. Um, Phoenix, yeah, but now we have we we have at at one of the most divided points in American history, you have Republicans and Democrats unified in trying to pass uh, UFO disclosure legislation, and unified in trying to get. Uh, the Pentagon to open up the door. Um, and that's always been the community doing that until now. And now it's uh, actual representatives who in every other regard can't stand each other. Yep. Who will never miss an opportunity to uh, uh, assault the character of somebody on the other side. And suddenly they're referring, you, you know, Chuck Schumer and Mike Grounds standing up and kind of defending their, their legislation after it got gutted and referring to each other as yep. my good friend, Senator yep. Schumer. Yep. And you know, the, uh, you know, my, my, my dear, dear friend, Ch you know, Mike rounds, you know, that's how they're talking I've about each other. Today, yeah. Well, think about the fact that Chuck Schumer, who's, who's the head of the Senate is putting a UAP bill out there. And that's mm -hmm. another point. Okay. So that comes out in July. He writes that bill gets put out there in July. 
it goes all the way till December as is. Then they gut it. Why mm-hmm. are you gutting it? I, I this is another thing that bothers me. It's like it's like this is this is evidence in my view. If you gave me a document that said, Ron, we want to check your house for leprechauns, I'd say go right ahead. You can look anywhere you want. There are no leprechauns here because leprechauns aren't real, and I don't have any in my house. Come take a look. Why would you cut that bill that no, we can't you can't look? You just told yeah. me there's no such thing, there's no evidence, there's no anything. Well, then why can't I look? That's just ridiculous on because, its face. Because they can't give up the secret of the Avro car. <laughs> well, because the representatives for for Wright Patterson Air Force Base yeah, that's what don't want them yeah. opening those doors. And and um and and I think I you know, I think that was um uh, you know, an incredible step forward was the fact that Schumer kind of representing his old mentor, Harry Reid, was willing to kind of put this out there. I think it did enter the bloodstream, even if it didn't hit with the lightning bolt effect, we would all hope. I think it's in the bloodstream in a fundamental way. Yeah. And I think that represents a form of disclosure. Um, and it's probably being silly not pointing out that the Act the law itself was called the UAP Disclosure Act of 2023. So, so yes. was, we're not assuming anything. That was in. That was the title of the bill. And, um, and, and it, I would point and out its cover page to, said the American people have a right to know about non-human intelligence. Yeah. And and I to counter my own. I mean, I think it's good to just challenge the UFO community. I mean, I just think we yeah. you know we should be pushing for, but for for you know, more evidence and, and encourage anyone who has information to, to come, you know, like it, it will take everyone to do it. However, there was an interesting quote on, uh, I guess it was an X, uh, you know, may, today, maybe on Joe Mergia's X, uh, I want to credit appropriately, but it was a quote from Gary Nolan, actually, who was talking about the Soul uh, Foundation. And he was talking about that he was called in a couple weeks before the event sort of to the administration of Stanford, and he went, oh, shit, like, here we go. Um, I'm going to have to change the venue. I'm going to have to change it. And in fact, what they said was, this, it, as opposed to saying that Stanford is supporting uh, the Soul Foundation hosting this event, they wanted it clear that Stanford was hosting this event and that the Soul Foundation was supporting it. So they really, it was a complete 180 from where uh, these institutions, these major institutions have, have been referenced. You go back to John Mack and you look at mm-hmm. the kind of Galileo level, uh, in, you know, experience that he went through and, and trying to destroy him. Uh, this was, you know, apparently they were, Stanford had, uh, they really wanted to be upfront and, and, uh, be clear about headlining this thing, which is, you know, that's, that is huge progress. I and think it's, it's fantastic. It's, yeah. I've not heard that. I think it's great. Yeah. Well, yeah. you look back, you think about like, you know, um, uh, James McDonald, a physicist who criticized the Condon report mm-hmm. and had his career taken away from him and wound up committing suicide. So in yeah. this regard, I think we have made a lot of progress. I think that doesn't happen now. I mean, Avi Loeb's taken some criticism, but they're not trying to get rid of him or anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. So, so we we have made progress in that regard. However, to me, it is glacial. I feel like I'm getting old and we're not getting much closer. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I really would like to find out a lot more information. And Mom. maybe the UAP bill will come back and maybe they'll reinstate it maybe you know well i keep hearing there's a queue of of whistleblowers right uh, already lined up uh, who have already done their initial paperwork have already applied for the protection um uh, from congress uh so and um and i keep hearing that you know i've been well i've been hearing that even as early as april some of this stuff is going to become public and our dream is to try to get one of those guys to come join us at Contact because all those guys are the guys that want to talk to them. You know, when that thing broke with Grosh, it, it, it coincidentally, another great synchronicity, that happened on Monday at Contact in the Desert last year. Oh, wow. Yeah. Andy Sheehan and, 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 and uh, Richard Dolan stopped their talk. We all poured into one room. A lot of the speakers were still there. 
we all crammed in there and we watched it. And then those guys kind of gave their feedback on it. It was like this great moment. That's And cool. now look, like you said, yeah. I've also heard that some of these guys are waiting in the wings and hopefully if they come out in April or even May, maybe they would still want to talk about it. What a perfect venue we have for such a thing. You know, we're trying to move this in much more scientific, high level uh, kind of conference, even more so than it's been. So maybe we can get one of those guys to come there. All the guys they want to talk to are there. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel like the, the, the caliber of, of guests, the, the, the breadth of experience, you know, it feels like that's what makes something like this event important. It makes it a, a lure for, uh, the people that can, you know, get a, have their sort of voices heard. It can be kind of disseminated by, you know, the community. We, and I think this exchange of ideas, I mean, it's all incredibly valuable at this time, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly excited for it, although I don't know what I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just kind of a dude. Listening. Even if you have a personal <laughs> interest in it, this is where you come learn about these things. You know, we're doing a new thing this year on Thursday. We're doing something called 101s, where we're doing like classes on this, not classes, mm -hmm. but we're calling them that, you know, tongue in cheek that, that like Steve Bassett's going to get, give a history of government disclosure. If people aren't up to speed Ron, on that, you could get that. We have a, I, Anthony I feel Pitts like for our, our, our can you tell us who Steve Bassett is just for our audience? Steve Bassett's a guy you should have on your show. He is yes. the, um, a disclosure advocate. He's actually a, um, what do you call that in government when you, a lobbyist. Lobbyist. He is an actual lobbyist for the UA, the, the government disclosure. He calls it the truth embargo hmm. on this topic. And he's an actual lobbyist in Washington, D.C., working on getting this moved forward and getting disclosure from our government we have a right to know and that's his position and i don't know of anyone who's more abreast of what's happening in washington uh, or on the internet with these things he reads all the articles he posts them to the paradigm research group that's a very valuable resource and um and he's been doing this since the 70s right yeah well i think he kind of got involved much more serious around 2001 with the Greer mm -hmm. uh, thing yeah. I mentioned earlier. That's when he became really, really, really involved. And since then, I think he's exclusively been doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, before that, I think he actually had real jobs and things. But now this is his like career. And, you know, he's fighting the fight for us. And I think it's wonderful. And, uh, yeah, he'll be there talking about that. So, you know, a couple guys give these things. Uh, Matthew James Bailey is an artificial intelligence expert who wrote the book, uh, The Ethics of AI. And, and so he's going to give kind of a cursory overview of artificial intelligence, because we all hear that term, but people don't really understand it, you know, like these experts do. So we're going to do four different 101 things on Thursday to kind of get people up to speed if you're not up to speed in these areas. And so it's a, it, it the thing about contact, it really is, if you if you just have a cursory interest in any of these topics, if you like technology or futurism or UFOs or any of these paranormal topics, it's 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 the place to go and uh, find out more. The future is here. Yeah. The future is here. My brother just sent me, he sent me a day or two ago, this conversation that he had with this AI, the um, like a... Uh, is it called the console for I don't even know what it is. He's more into this stuff than I am. But it was this, you know, just long dialogue about, you know, uh, its sentience or ability to be sentient. And, and it was this back and forth that was astonishing. Uh, my son studies AI, and he's a little bit less, uh, you know, certain that it he doesn't feel like it'll become sentient because he just feels it's just incredibly ridiculously advanced language models that are just so remarkable at predicting what how they should talk about things so it's it's just um but i i find it all that this i i do feel like there is some connection to what is being born into our world right now which is this this next technological leap as that i don't know the equivalent since nuclear power or something you know or the the sure this is the, the next splitting of the thing. atom this, this is yeah. absolutely that next big thing we're going to have a panel uh, on non-human intelligences and and they are is it ai becoming sentient is it alien beings is it interdimensional beings is it spiritual beings 
is it all these different forms of things that people would qualify as non-human intelligence. In fact, you know, we're doing a thing Friday night, Matthew Bailey and uh, Adam Curry are doing a live Turing test. You guys know what that is, of course, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like the movie Blade Runner, you know, mm -hmm. like you couldn't tell if that was a real person or not and it watch its tears and try to pin it down. They're going to do a live test where they have some of our other speaker celebrities are going to sit up there and they're all going to read the answers. And then the audience has to decide, was that the human answer or was that an artificial mm. intelligence answer? And to see if you can actually distinguish between the two because That's it's getting really close. How interesting. Yeah. It's getting frighteningly. It's getting, you know, uh, yes, very, very close indeed. Um, just so we know, are uh, tickets still available? Can people still sign up? Is there, you know, Absolutely. and this is taking place, and Indian Springs is, again, remind me Indian where Wells. exactly. Right. Indian Wells. Palm right. Wells, yeah. Let's see. It's 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 Indian Palm Wells, Springs. which is right next to Palm Springs. <laughs> right. so yes. Most people fly right into Palm Springs. It's real easy to get over to the venue. Um, yeah, it's still available. Um, we are starting on May 30th through June 3rd, Thursday through Monday. We have a true full five days of events, and it is available. The hotel that we're in is almost sold out, very, very close to sold out, less than 10 rooms available. But there are other hotels right there and right across sure. the street, so a lot of people stay just really nearby. Um, yeah, everything's at contactinthedesert.com. That's where to go, contactinthedesert.com. You can buy the hotel at a discount through there. You can get our tickets through there. All of the things we discussed today and all the speakers are listed on there. You can kind of get a sense of what's what's happening. It's going to be very exciting. Very cool. And um, these guys I'm, are going to be there. To top it all yeah. off, the the main draw is really, question mark, that, yes. that podcast live. They may do more than one, it sounds like. We're going to have to talk later, see if you guys want to do more than one live in front of an audience. We'll pick out a couple of the, the, the speakers you guys want to uh, interview. And then it'll be fun to have a live audience there. Wouldn't it have like immediate yeah. feedback right there and they can boo and hiss or heckle I'm or telling you. Mm -hmm. stuff, you know? It, it's it'll be gonna a be a ride. Industry. I think it'll be a lot of fun to have a, a, a live podcast. This is a new idea. I agree. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Another new thing we're doing is we're having uh single day passes. So like if you if if you can get there, just come for one day and check it out. You know, you used to have to buy the five day pass, and if, if you can't do that, come one day. Dip your toe in the mm -hmm. water, check it out. And and as 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 Dave likes to point out, we have a pool. Yeah. <laughs> there is a pool and there's so much to learn as I myself continue to learn. And this is an opportunity to mix it up with uh experts at all levels of this phenomenon, uh, from government, from academia, from you know, journalism, uh, research, experiencers. It really is a great way to um yeah kind of catch up as we're trying to do on our podcast and is your podcast has it started ron it's 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 gonna be starting in may we're gonna start it up in may it's gonna be called mm -hmm. beyond contact and it'll be okay. you know the same sort of thing all of these guys will be coming on the guys that are on the uh at the show will be coming on our show and it gives us a chance to kind of go a little more in depth you know like you guys have done here you talk it's good to talk to these guys and then you're going to get a flavor of what they're going to talk about at contact. It's sort of like sometimes in our mind, we see contact as sort of a, uh, an annual thing where these guys work all year and then they kind of release their new stuff. A lot of times mm. at contact, you know, what they've, the new conclusions, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and if it's anything like the television critics association that I've gone to many times, everyone's going to be getting it on. Oh boy. <laughs> I can either oh confirm God. or deny any of that activity. Right. Dave. Yeah. This is I an those, academic I, I know those, enter, those entertainment reporters, they love getting out of town. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Besides, yeah. besides the uh, seriousness and science and, and, and uh, academic aspects of this event, it is just a ton of fun. Yeah, Not yeah. just the pool, but just, just the vibe there. You know, everybody has a good time. It's very casual. You know, there's, it's never rained there. It's always great weather. We play Hollywood movies outside at night we're gonna have like et on the big screen outside and and the mom from et d wallace is going to introduce it we, yeah. we, just, we don't have time to even That's talk true. About i think i think i'm on a panel with d wallace you are I, yes sir i think yes, i'm on the celebrity sir. the celebrity panel or the, the hollywood. hollywood disclosure alliance panel as a matter yeah. of 
talk to. Yeah, I know my and my good friend Michael Ian Black was going to be there, but he had to cancel, I believe. He unfortunately can't be here. But uh, which I'm yeah, because that he's a great guy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He'll probably come next year. Awesome. Well, listen, Ron. Thank you for uh, this. Was great. Let's keep this conversation going. We'd love to have you back, and and absolutely. uh, we can't wait to see you uh, at the end of May for Contact in the Desert. This is going to be super cool. We'll, in the meantime, talk to you about guests and figuring out the whole thing. But um, I'm really, I'm super stoked for it. It's going to be a lot of fun. It is. Yeah. Hit me yeah. up with that. We'll get you taken care of. All right. And thanks, for, thanks for your guys. time today, Ron. It was really awesome. great talking with you. No problem. Thanks, guys. Really enjoyed it. Okay, right. buddy. Talk Bye-bye. to you soon.